Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Anne Hornaday. So I would love to flash back now, speaking of liberal arts, to when you were in college. As I said, you majored in government at Smith College. Did you know what you were going to do with that degree, Anne, and that major when you graduated? No, I really was at a crossroads when I graduated. I spent that summer, (laughs) I was so at a crossroads that I didn't leave Northampton. I worked for a professor. He was writing a book and I was doing some research for him on that book in order to buy time so that I could make up my mind. I really thought I would either go to New York to try to make it as a writer or go to Washington and get into the policy world. I studied Middle East politics and also political theory, but one of my concentrations was the Middle East and my idealistic self wanted to come to Washington and help solve the Arab-Israeli dispute. Um, oh, you're you're the one day, that's been missing. That was the missing link. Right. It's if my only fault. you had yeah, done that. It's on me. I know. It's like if I'd only... <laughs> I feel a little guilty. But uh, anyway, literally, I could have done one or the other. I mean, I cared so much about that issue and I still do, honestly. And it just breaks my heart. You know, you do wonder what would have happened. But It came down to almost the fact that I knew more people in New York so that I could sleep on their couches when I was looking for a job. It was just, it was that practical. And so that's how it went. But I could have taken that other path if just a few circumstances had been different. And I probably would have had a very rewarding and interesting life there too. So it's funny how life turns out. But yes, I did know always that I wanted to be a writer. Writing was always something that I took easily to and frankly, got praised for. And I just think so much of your life follows what you get supported for and what you get responses to and what you get praised for. And writing was definitely one of those things for me, even since I was in elementary school. I think that is such an important point that if you lean into what your own superpowers are, you'll find it's a great way at the very least to start your career play to your strengths as Anne did. Agreed. So how did you get your first job and what was it? In New York, my first job was as a researcher at Ms. Magazine. And this was very much a product of my social capital that I was lucky enough to have because I grew up in Des Moines, Iowa, which is home to Meredith Publishing Corporation. And Meredith, of course, is best known for Better Homes and Gardens magazine. But Meredith had a huge printing operation and printed all sorts of different magazines, including Ms. And I was lucky enough to be good friends with the CEO of Meredith at the time, a wonderful man named Bob Burnett, who went to University of Missouri Journalism School, by the way. And I'm sure your listeners are all familiar with the good old informational interview where you basically call... Anybody that you know in any profession that you're interested in, and it's like what you're doing here with Time for Coffee, you have to go have a cup of coffee and find out about what's going on and where they work and if they're hiring. And Bob was kind enough to let me come in and talk to him about publishing and what was going on at Meredith. And he was the one who said, you know, I think you should talk to, there's a wonderful woman here named Rita Waterman who had worked at Ms. And then came over to Meredith. He said, you would just you would just love her. She's the kind of person that you would want to be when you grow up. So I did. I went over and met Rita and she could not have been kinder. And she said, well, do you think you might ever want to work at Ms? And of course, coming from Smith, that was a dream job. She picked up the phone and called her old buddies at Ms. There was a research job open, which is a very typical, classic, entry-level journalism job. And I 
typed up my resume on my old Smith Corona typewriter and sent it in and I got an interview and I got that job. So it was just lucky, lucky, luck, luck, lucky all the way through. Well, it may have been lucky, but you were leveraging the contacts that you did have that you had already cultivated in your professional network before you had graduated. That is true. You know, it's funny because I don't think I ever thought that I did that. I mean, I do remember distinctly in those weeks that I had first arrived in New York calling everybody and just, again, going out for coffee, buying them a glass of wine, just to kind of talk about their job and how they got there and just introducing myself around. And we had talked earlier about hard skills, soft skills. Part of the soft skills of all of this is just being outgoing and brave about calling people. And then I guess just being open to whatever they have to say, instead of going in with an agenda, really truly going in more with curiosity and going with an idea of helping. How can I be helpful? How would I be able to be helpful to your enterprise? Or conversely, what's an enterprise I could be helpful in rather than I need a job? (laughs) Come with their interest in mind and whether or not you might be able to be a good fit with whatever they might bring up. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.